is cataractcoach.com. And we're looking at a routine case here. And the technique I want to show you is, what do you do when you have an incomplete chop? You use the phaco chopper to try to separate the nucleus into halves. And you get somewhat of a chop, but it doesn't propagate all the way through. So you do not have two separate nuclear halves. How do you then proceed? And so in this video, I'm going to show you my technique here. In this video, we'll do a cataract surgery where we use the phaco chopper and we try to get an initial chop and divide the lens into two even hemineucleus fragments. But what happens is the chop only propagates partially through. And as a result, it's not separated. So what I do is I use the chopper to actually manually help separate those two halves. I'll show you what I mean by that. So here we've made our incision. We're going to do our capsular axis. This is a smaller eye. This patient's hyperopic. This eye has a shorter axial length, a smaller white-to-white -white measurement, a little bit of shallow anterior chamber. And the eye wall power is, of course, a little bit higher because of the hyperopia. So we're going to tear a 5 millimeter capsular axis in the anterior lens capsule. That looks pretty good. You see my forceps are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters, so we can judge the appropriate size. Now, importantly for CHOP, we have to have good hydro dissection. We want to separate the cataract from the lens capsule. So we'll get a good fluid wave there, one more wave the other way. And let's try to rotate the lens. And that looks great. It's rotating. So here comes the phaco probe and the chopper. First, some dispersive viscoelastic. We'll buzz in with the phaco probe, hold the nucleus. We'll use the chopper. And let me show you. So phaco probe going in, chopper in, buzz in. And we chop, and it doesn't fully separate. So I rotate it, try to bring that first half up. Not quite. Try again. And I'll bring that first half up. I'll use the chopper around the back just to lift that piece up. And by lifting and rotating that piece, it loosened it and fully propagated that chop. And now I can quickly just emulsify that half. Now we're ready for the second half of the nucleus. And, of course, that comes up very easily. And we can just use the phaco probe to further emulsify it. So if you do phaco chop and the chop doesn't fully propagate, that's okay. You can manually use the phaco probe and the chopper just to separate or claw apart the fragments. And that's an important technique here. We'll go to the irrigation aspiration now. Put the eye probe in the eye. This rest of the case is pretty routine and proceeds normally. So removing our cortex, there was actually a big epinuclear piece. Again, remember how I remove pieces of the cortex in a, a circumferential manner. I like to grab a lot of it and then bring it centrally. And the same concept here. Grab the piece and bring it circumferentially and bring it towards the middle. That looks great. You can see there's the outline of the capsularexis. Pretty clean. A little tiny nuclear fragment there. We can wolf that down, use the chopper if we need to to push it in the port. And we're ready for, to put the eye well in the eye. So fill the capsule bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. That's a nice good fill. There's one little nuclear fragment or, or epinuclear fragment left, which we just pushed out of the way. And now we'll deliver our eye well into the capsule bag. And that looks fantastic. We'll make sure the whole eye well goes in the capsule bag and the haptics unfold appropriately. That one small piece of lens material will, of course, get out. And we'll get that out right about now. We're going to use our our uh, phaco probe just to depress the incision a little bit. There it is, and it burps right out of the eye. And now the IA probe to remove the viscoelastic. I think it's important to go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic. And then to go in front of the lens, of course, to remove the remainder. We can see that overlap of the Rex is on top of the optic. That looks great. It's a, it's a six millimeter optic and a five millimeter capsular axis. There we go. Just making sure we have all the viscoelastic removed from the eye, being thorough in that process. Remember to also use a high flow setting on your viscoelastic removal. So I like a flow setting of at least 50 or 60 cc's per minute. And now at the end here, we're going to seal up the incision. This patient had a, lot, a host of medical issues and was only on the topical anesthesia. There was no intravenous sedation for this patient. So there's a little bit of extra movement compared to most. 
That's the back and forth hydration of the incision and we'll sweep in the anterior chamber and everything looks great here. So interesting case, I hope you learned a lot from it.